I'm going to go over how to process a VR180 video from scratch. From If you just shoot a custom camera, you end up with two circular fisheye images. And I want to show really quickly how to do it in Vegas, because everyone's showing how to do it in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. I'm still using Vegas, which I think is fine. There's a kind of a big catch to doing it in Vegas, but it's not that bad. So in Vegas... I'm going to just run through the steps pretty quickly. So let's say I'm using any one of my custom cameras or the Zcam K1 Pro, which is what this exactly is going to be using. You have these sliders in, in Vegas. Uh, the interface might be a little different, but you want to get to import media. I have a left and a right clip. And here they are. You can see they're just circular fisheye. And you can do this with your own custom cameras, and you'll end up with two you know, left and a right clip. So I want to have my left image dragged onto the timeline. It's going to just accept whatever that, that file is for the permanent file structure. And then the only tr real trick with doing 3D with Vegas is you take your right clip and put it below, not on the volume track, but totally below the first track. I'm just going to delete this volume track. It doesn't do anything. And now you have your left above your right. I can minimize this thing. And if you go to the project settings and then over to advanced and then stereo's 3D mode, we want to make this a 3D project by picking one of these. I always start with blend initially because I need to align the images. So we hit OK. So now the project is 3D, but we need to get these two clips to become a 3D clip. So you click on one of them, you control click on the other so that now they're both selected. And then you right click and you say pair stereoscopic 3D subclip. When you do that, <clears throat> you can see that this gets blurry because it's stacking the left and the right on top of each other because I chose blend. And I can delete the extra track that we don't need anymore because it merged them. I usually move this down so I can see what I'm doing better. And you can see that we have images that we want to align. So this is really a two-step process where step one, I just want to align the 3D image. So I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to add the effect of stereoscopic 3D adjustment and then hit OK. And then expand the corrections area here. And what I'm really trying to do is auto-correct because it does a great job of rotating and aligning the image. I always take Keystone off, so this once I click that button, you now see that this is aligned mostly correctly. With Keystone off, it's not going to try to make a distortion correction that I don't really want. So it's only going to do horizontal, vertical, and zoom, which is maybe if the lenses have some slight variation, which probably happens in rotate, are very important. Now the key thing is I'm outside here, so you can see the trees in the distance. You really want, for viewing on a VR headset, you want to make that converge. So with VR180 in headsets, convergence is at infinity. So those two points, we have to make converge. So in the stereoscopic viewer here, if you hold down control and then adjust your horizontal offset so that those trees are merged together. Another easy way to see what you're doing is to right click on the video clip and, and turn enable preview scaling off. This will give you a one-to-one -one view of what you're doing. So when you hold control down and horizontal offset again, you can see that you're basically adjusting the convergence point for the video. And I want the most distant object to be converged. I really want an infinity converged video so that when you put it on a VR headset, it looks correctly represented in three dimensions. So if this was a perfect 180 degree video, we'd be done with step one, and you could output it, but the weird issue here is this camera shoots more than 180 degrees. So because it's shooting more than 180 degrees in the video, you can see the left lens and the right lens. They're right here. So this means these lenses I know are shooting about 220 degrees field of view. Now we're shooting VR 180, so we don't need the extra width that this thing gives you, the extra width, you might want to need it for stabilizing the video, but this is shot on a tripod, so I'm just going to get 180 degree field of view. 
So the easy way to do that is in the pan and crop section of the video of event effects here, you can start to crop that out. So if we go to like 2600 for the width and the height, we're zooming in a bit on it here. So this is good. So I really, because 180 degrees is really easy with the VR180 camera with it's shooting too many degrees because you just can cut the crop right at the edge of the of the lens and you can see it here. So if I go into 2500 on both the X and the Y because we're ending up with a square format, I got a little bit of a lens here and nothing over here. So usually when I get that close, I start to try to center it up. So I'm going to scoot the whole thing over a little bit by clicking on this and I can see just the top of the lens here and the top of the lens there pretty much work pretty good here. So now that I've cropped in to so that this square that we're looking at, if I go right click on the video and enable preview scaling again, I can see the whole image. We're cropping in on the circle that is the 180 degree circle. The, this wall here, I lined the camera up intentionally so that that wall is right at 180 degrees. And you can see that with that cropping of the lens out, you're really going to get 180 degrees and not more than that because it's a VR 180. I don't want more than 180 because the next step is going to do a distortion correction to give you the correct environment. And we want that to be exact. So that looks good. What's happened now that I've done some cropping is it's thrown the alignment off. So I'm going to zoom in again here, turn my preview scaling off just to get closer. The trees don't line up again. So we'll just do another real quick auto correct. And then I want to turn Keystone off. And then I want to hold Control down and do my positioning for the de depth object there. Okay, so we've got our infinity converged at infinity. Stereoscopic is set. We have, you know, the circles ready to be processed here. The last part of step one is to go to the project. Advanced. Stereoscopic 3D mode, we want side-by-side -side full, and then say OK. So this is what we end up with. We just want those circular fish eyes, but we want them perfectly centered and aligned and rotated and everything. This is what I see everywhere where people don't do this step. They take whatever comes out of the camera, cram it into VR180, and the rotation's off, the vertical alignment's off, the horizontal alignment's off, and it's just hard to look at. It's hard on your eyes. This is step one is critical, and this is where it gets kind of weird with Vegas because we have to, we can't just continue to the next step because they just don't have the right plugins. So we have to render this clip out. I do it uncompressed just so that we have a video that has the left and the right together. And I've also made uh, export renders where the, if you look at the template I'm using, I just want whatever the project's resolution is for the certain frame weight, which it requires you, it doesn't use project frame rate. I don't think that's an, even an option in here. So I, this project, I know I shot it in 29.97. So whatever, I'm just gonna dump it out. So this is step one. It's going to dump it out to a file called untitled. But all it's going to do is push this out to a uncompressed file so that I can do step two. This is the difficulty with using Vegas. I have to do it in two steps because there's no plugin that works with defishing these lenses. Okay, so now that it's exported that to another file, we can close this project out. And then we're basically going to create a new project by picking up that piece of media that we just exported, which is the two circles. Dump that into a project, accept the settings, squish this window back down. So from this step forward, it's the only way you can defish the thing. You go into effects. And I have a filter package that has the steps. And that pretty much does it there. So 
This plugin is weird because it only accepts two circular fish eyes to defish them to turn it into the conventional VR180. You can see the vertical lines are now straight. Uh, and without it, if I just pull the two off, these are the two circles you start with. So the weird thing about this plugin is you can't apply this to this a stereoscopic project like the project we just had to close out. It requires one video with the two things already in it. So this is a, a kind of a fluke with Vegas where they didn't think this through. They don't have a single D fish component that you can put in a 3D project to do this all in one step. So you gotta end one project, start another one with these things already merged together. So now that they're already merged together and critically aligned as well, aligned correctly, and it's 180 degrees, not a 220 degree video, that's all been sorted out before this step, so now we just have a normal video where it's all aligned and ready to go. You do the dual fish eye, dual fish, dual fish eye stitching, and then that shoves the whole image half off. I think because in the very early days of VR180, some camera came up with a standard of making the central one of the images in the middle. No one really ever wants that. So you do scene rotation, which we're just pulling the y-axis 90 degrees over. So that way we end up with a left and a right that's normal VR180 where all these the, the data is now correctly formatted. So if we uncheck these two, we can see that we have the circular fish, check both of them. We now have the VR180 formatted version of this thing. And usually you throw in stuff like sharpen, unsharp mask. Usually if, I, if you go to the video plugins, I usually have uh, saturation in here. And you usually want to do that before you sharpen and crank a little bit in here. But that's about it. So now, I mean, you can do, of course, all the other video editing that you normally would do on a Vegas video file, which you can look anywhere. But part two, you know, which is just the, the getting this thing to defish, everything about part two is the same as a normal video file, except these, you got to have these two options in there. And then, this still isn't a 3D project, it's just a normal video project. You render this thing out. And the other thing I do is, I don't use the compressor in Vegas because it's horrible. So I always render everything out again, uncompressed fully, and then open it with a different piece of software and do a video compression to H.265. I use TMPEG Inc. I don't know what its real name is, it's, but it works really good. It's uh, T-M-P-G-E-N-C, T-M-P-E-G encoder, I guess is what it originally was called. And it does the final compression, and I end up with a very much control, high-quality way to process and prep the final file. And then, if you want to post it to YouTube VR, like after this thing does all its outputting, you still have to run that VR 180 creator embed the metadata, VR180 metadata, into the, this finished file, this one that it would be exporting here, and then you're really done. Anyways, this is the free version. Uh, VR180 Creator used to be software that was free. It's probably not available easily. You can find it somewhere. Encode the VR180 data, metadata, in the final video when you finally finish it, even if you use different software. Like if you use Vegas software, I'm still using this to use this last option they have to encode the final video you have with the correct format so it'll play it back correctly in YouTube VR and this is a big deal. YouTube VR really wants that metadata correct or it really won't show up correct.